Hello and welcome to R Ventura TV. I'm your host, Jeffrey Donovan, and today we'll be discussing one of Ventura's most iconic venues, the Majestic Ventura Theater. I'll be joined with Stefan Brigatti, one of the management team members at Ventura Theater. Thanks for joining us, Stefan, and yeah, welcome for, to the show. Thanks for asking. I'm glad to be here. All right. Well, let's get right to it. Sure. Um, why don't you give me a little bit of the history of the Ventura Theater? Uh, when was it established? When did it become a music venue? Well, they started designing it and putting it together in the 1920s. Um, in the 1920s, it was the only luxurious palace-style theater in Ventura County. And then, of course, when we opened up in 1928, I didn't open up in 1928, but when it did open up in 1928, um, the big oil boom was happening, so they really wanted big entertainment. So they opened it up as a vaudeville type theater and movie palace, you know, and they included the, the Spanish architecture, which was very popular at the time. Um, so a lot of like uh, silent films were done there with the organs playing. Um, everyone's familiar with the Our Gang series from the, the children's TV show. They did a lot of that there as well. And it was a, a vaudeville variety style theater. That's why when you go in there, you can stay on the stage and talk loudly, and it'll project through the whole room because of the way it was designed for uh, people to stand up there and do the vaudeville shows. Yeah, tell me a little, a little bit more about the architecture of the building. The architecture is, uh, like I said, is a Spanish style architecture. You can tell by the columns and the way it's set up. Uh, when you walk in, it, it's a big, wide building with all the columns and the fine details, which is really beautiful and at that time was really, really rare. So for you to be able to go there, you were pretty much living the good life uh -huh. with all the people in the- I, the I know lots of those older buildings like have like hidden passageways and uh, you know dark tunnels, underground okay. rooms and things like that. Is, is there anything like that at the Ventura Theater? Uh, it's funny because we actually have the original blueprints from when it was designed None of that stuff really matches up to what we're finding. <laughs> we do have uh, hidden rooms, um, catacombs. Uh, there's uh, secret passages that go under the theater to other sections. And we've been told there's tunnels underneath the theater that go out to across the street and down the parking lot towards the news building and towards the Earl Stanley building. A lot of things were happening during those early times. So yeah. it's very interesting. <laughs> right. what's, uh, what's the maximum capacity of the theater? Um, we do about 1,200 okay. comfortably. Okay. Anything past that is pretty uncomfortable, but we do 1,200 is our capacity. All right. And how did you become involved with the theater? Um, I started hanging out there when I was in bands in the, the early 90s, became friends with Tom, who owned the theater at the time. Uh, started hanging out with them, but at the same time, I was friends with the soon-to-be owners in 96, so I kind of went back and forth. When they came down and took over, I I got embedded with them with the theater uh, from 96 to about 2001. And I've recently, in the past couple of years, made my return back to the theater. So it's good to be back home. Great, right. Well, um, like what, what, what are the different types of events that the theater holds? And uh, how do they um, uh, benefit the community? And we do a lot. Um, obviously, there's um, the big concert series. So we're always having big concerts there. Um, besides that, we give. Um, the opportunity for the schools to have their proms and special events there. Oh, nice. um, other people in the community like to rent it out and have their, their Christmas parties and holiday stuff there, which is great. Um, a lot of the things that we also do is we're like a housing center when times of emergency strike. Um, a good example is the Thomas Fires. We open that up for people to bring donations in um, to be a part of that, part of the charity as well. Uh, when the hurricanes hit in Texas, we got involved as well. Uh, Moan, everyone knows from the theater, does a lot of that work. And uh, she actually got giant trucks and took supplies down to Texas to help the people that were stuck oh, in the flooded areas, all the disaster zones. Same thing with the fires out here, we get involved. And we constantly do uh, shows where we can have people donate or bring supplies, you know, toiletries, baby supplies, uh, things for animals. Mm -hmm. And we set that up there. We just did a a Christmas show there that was that was uh, fun for the families and all the kids to come and people just have to bring can a, a canned good or maybe some pet supplies. Mm -hmm. uh, I do annually um, a blanket run for the homeless. 
I'm always trying to collect blankets to keep people warm out there because it's it gets cold out there, and especially during the rainy season. And I know people are homeless and having a hard time, and I see children out there. So I want to make sure that if they can keep warm through the night, then that helps everybody. You know? All right, great, great. And, and I know the theater does um, a, a lot of uh, benefits that support local and national charities. Um, yes. How did that come about? Is, is that an entire program that the theater runs? And well, it's, I started called uh, Concerts for Causes. Mm -hmm. And uh, working with other people, um, you know, Cover Magazine, and of course we had the Red Light District show, we got to see a lot of the local talent really rising up, but there's not that many places they can really perform and show what they can do. So I wanted to do the local shows, and at the same time, have each one dedicated towards a different charity. So everybody gets to go to the shows, they get to show their stuff, plus the charities win, so it's a community thing. And each time we do one, we select a different charity in our community. All right, and you also select different artists, local artists each time you try to get, Absolutely. you know, every, everybody get involved. Right? Everybody gets yeah. a chance to show what they can do. Right. And they get uh, news exposure, they get interviews, and they get a chance to be mentioned in the magazine. Yeah. And just as much as we can do for everybody. That's fantastic, yeah. And um, see, so, you know, um, I've actually been played on that stage there, and it's one of the largest stages I've played on. Uh, it's it's just fantastic for the artists. So you know, what are some of the other unique traits that um, that are very favorable for the artists there? Uh, well, a lot of bands have played there and film there. So I try to recommend to the bands that are going to play on that stage if they want to film, they can. If they want to record, they can. It's a great opportunity to show what they can do. Obviously, you know, a lot of famous videos have been filmed there. Everyone refers to the Pearl Jam video mm -hmm. where Eddie Vedder was swinging on the. On the on the <laughs> ladder there and stuff, but uh, Chris Cornell's crowd surf there when he's doing his thing, being dragged across the, the floor and stuff. I mean, that's an opportunity to get the beat on that stage with that sound and those lights. Mm -hmm. Those local bands can really produce a great promotional video or just kind of show other people what they can do on a bigger stage. All right. um, from the audience perspective, uh, the layout inside is, is fairly unique. Um, how did, how did that layout uh, come to be? Has it, has it changed, evolved over time, or is it, is it fairly the way it was uh, back in the 20s? I, the bar area has changed a little bit, but the, the main floors there mm -hmm. uh, have relatively been the same. Uh, a lot of people don't realize when you're on the main floor right in front of the stage, that's actually an orchestra pit. That floor opens up and there's where the orchestra would sit from back in the day. <laughs> Well, uh, what what features do the, um, the the theater attendees what what do they comment on most? What do you hear the most from them about the theater? Um, well, obviously, we hear constantly about how beautiful the place is. I mean, the chandelier is amazing, and people it, it are always in there taking beautiful. pictures of right. the chandelier. Um, the layout, the way it's easy to get in and out. We have a lot of different areas you can walk down from the bar area down to the floor. Um, that's that's great. We have multiple bars opening and depending on the size of the show it makes it easier for people to get access to what they want. Um, the sound, if you're in the right spot, the sound is just amazing because it reverbs through the whole building. Right. You know, and it just sounds monstrous in there. Hmm. Uh, tell us about some of the acts that are there. What are what are some of the bigger names that have come through the theater? Um, a lot of the big ones that have happened to the theater has been opened. Uh, we know uh, the Grateful Dead was there at one point. Uh, we just had Bob Weir there again, revisiting, and it was a great show. Uh, Morrissey plays there a lot, he does a lot of his big tour and test runs and stuff there. Um, my, some of my favorites are like Black Sabbath has played there, Motorhead's played there, right. Slayer has played there. I mean, some of the heavier guys. Some of, yeah. some of the heavier guys. But we have quite a variety. Some huge country artists have played there. Um, uh, I would say a lot of big reggae acts have played there. Mm -hmm. You know, we get these shows that come up and people are like, I can't believe they're playing there. Oh my God, it's so great. I want to see them. How, so, about, how about the local acts? Have, have you seen any of the local acts come from um, starting in both the community and at the Ventura Theater and then, and then go on to get really big? Absolutely. Yeah. What, what are some of those bands? Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. Yeah. They came in, they, were, they, they took off pretty big. Um, a lot of the reggae bands that we go there, that are local for, or from Santa Barbara area come down and play there a lot and get a big following and then they, they're on tour and they always on their way through stop by and play the theater. They'll do like two days of them and stuff. So it's so great. You've seen a lot of shows there and uh, you know, being one of the managers. Yeah. So what was your favorite show and, and why was that? Um, there was this band called Typo Negative. Uh, big 
metal rock band. And uh, I liked them. So I got a chance to actually be in the room when they were uh, doing their sound check with all the lights and stuff. And I couldn't believe how good they were. <laughs> it sounded like they were playing to a tape. And back in this, this time, this was like in the 90s, so there was, there were, there were, people weren't really playing to a lot of tracks and stuff. Right. And it sounded so beautiful and so perfect that it was almost overwhelming. <laughs> all of a sudden, I was the, like the biggest fan with those guys forever. And other than the bands playing there, um, what's the most interesting thing that you would say has happened at the theater during, during your time there? Uh, something unusual, something odd. Um, one time there was uh, definitely something unusual. Um, the Temptations were playing there. And uh, it was during the heavy raining season. And then uh, so the rain started getting through and coming down and uh, hitting the stage. And they were trying to get <laughs> away from all the rain. And this was a long time ago. Things have obviously been fixed since then. But it was interesting to try to watch those guys view the show and try to get out of the rain at the same time. Right. You know. How many people does it take to run a venue of that size? It uh, depends the size of a show. We have about, um, about five or six of us in the office during the week. And then depending on the size, we'll have like 20, 25 crew members, like staff members. Mm -hmm. Plus we have our sound engineering people, which is like about uh, a few more people and then full lighting crew and stuff as well. So right. there's a lot. Right. Um, you got any big renovations or retrofits that are coming out to the theater? Um, we're trying to redo some of the, the front stuff and get it all organized again over the years with, with earthquakes and movement. There's cracks and stuff, so we just want to get it all situated and beautiful again, like the inside, you know. Right, right. Keep it all nice and fresh. Right. Any any improvements to uh, other things like um, uh, acoustics or anything like that? I mean, the acoustics are kind of set the way they are because, like I said, it was a vaudeville theater, so they had to right. design with the big acoustics. Right. So we have uh, new boards, new sound systems. We just got incredible new lighting system, which just illuminates the place beautifully. You know, it just it just sounds incredible in there now. Hmm. Interesting. So, um, where can people find out more about the Ventura Theater? Say online. Oh, you can um, go to our webpage at majesticventuratheater.net. Obviously, we have a huge Facebook presence. You can find us at Majestic Ventura Theater on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, you can even sign up for our emails, and then we'll send you guys emails and uh, of events that are happening. All right. Is there anything that I've missed about the theater that you would feel uh, it's important to talk about? The most important thing to talk about is, um, and we talked a little bit about it, is that the Ventura Theater is like a centerpiece of downtown Ventura, and it is for the community. So we do things there. We do what the rentals people want to do. And of course, our charity work and trying to be involved as much as we can. Right. As soon as we find out something's going on, we're right on top of that stuff. Right, great. All right, well, um, on that note, uh, this concludes this edition of Our Ventura TV. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, Stefan, and uh, thank all of you for tuning in. Until next time.